You're watching Euronews Now with me, Sarah Green. Let's take a look at our latest stories. The war of words over Ukraine heats up again, but have U.S. plans to deploy troops in Eastern Europe pushed Russia a step closer to war on the ground? Shares in Meta plunge by 20% as Facebook loses users to its younger rival TikTok. And we meet the artist whose satirical sketches are a controversial challenge to the status quo in Syria's Idlib province. The announcement that the U.S. is to deploy more than 3,000 of its troops in Germany, Poland and Romania has raised the stakes in the standoff over Ukraine. To be precise, President Joe Biden is ordering 2,000 U.S.-based troops to NATO allies Poland and Germany and shifting 1,000 more from Germany to Romania. But they are not being sent to non-NATO member Ukraine. This is not... Uh, troops that will go into Ukraine. They're not fighting in Ukraine. Uh, these, this is us, uh, this is the United States, abiding by our commitments uh, under Article 5 to support, reassure our partners in the region. Russia's foreign office in Moscow promptly fired back with a sharply worded objection. Deputy Foreign Minister Alexander Krushenko said in remarks carried by the Interfax news agency, the unfounded destructive steps will only fuel military tensions and narrow the field for political decisions. Not sending the troops to Ukraine is a move designed to avoid provoking Moscow, who, for its own security, wants guarantees that Ukraine never joins NATO. Meanwhile, the diplomatic efforts continue, with President Vladimir Putin telling UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson in a phone call that NATO and its allies are ignoring Russia's security concerns. French President Emmanuel Macron is also emphasising the dialogue route to solve the crisis. I'm obviously very concerned about the situation on the ground. I've had many exchanges in recent days with my European counterpart, with President Putin on several occasions, and I'll be speaking with President Biden in the next few hours. In any case, we're in the process of trying to find common ground. The rush to find that common ground is taking place against growing fears that Russia will invade Ukraine, something President Putin denies. U.S. Special Forces carried out what the Pentagon described as a successful large-scale counter-terrorism raid in northwestern Syria early on Thursday. Local rescue workers said at least 13 people were killed, six of them children, but as yet there's no official confirmation of casualties. The operation, which lasted around two hours, was in and around the village of Atma in Syria's rebel-held Idlib province near the Turkish border. The U.S. didn't say who or what was the target, but local residents said it involved helicopters, explosions and machine gun fire. Idlib is dominated by the Al-Qaeda group and its affiliates, and is home to several top Al-Qaeda operatives. But it's also dotted with camps for internally displaced people from Syria's civil war. A Pentagon press secretary, John Kirby, said the mission was a success, that there were no U.S. casualties, and that more information would be provided as it becomes available. As negotiations with Russia continue, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson is facing another crisis at home, as the so-called Partygate scandal shows no sign of letting up. Our reporter Victoria Smith has the latest from London. Boris Johnson coming under more pressure from his own party, with three more MPs now asking for him to leave. The senior uh, Tory MP uh, Tobias Elwood, a former defence defence minister, and the backbenchers Sir Gary Streeter and Anthony Mangnall, MP for Devon. Uh, it needs to be 54 MPs that write to the 1922 committee uh, before a vote of no confidence can take place. But the pressure is mounting on Boris now as these names continue to be added to the list. And of course, what he's doing is trying to hide behind uh, other areas, international areas, trying to be an international statesman. We've seen that with his visit to Ukraine, uh, looking at the national agenda, the cost of living, for example, and rolling out this levelling up agenda that he promised to voters in the north of the country back in 2019. He's now announced how a five billion euro fund will be spent on areas such as broadband and education and public transport. But 
Will these big diversionary tactics be enough to save him? We don't know yet. We wait for the police inquiry to come out, but certainly pressure is continuing to mount from within his own party. The Northern Ireland Protocol, a linchpin in the Brexit agreement, is on the verge of unravelling. The region's Agriculture Minister, Edwin Poots, has taken the unilateral decision to halt Irish sea border customs checks as of midnight. The move sets him on a collision course with Brussels. The protocol demands that checks on goods from Great Britain must take place at Northern Ireland's ports to make sure they comply with EU laws. It effectively creates a customs border in the Irish Sea, the idea being to avoid a hard border between Northern Ireland and its neighbour to the south, the Republic of Ireland. Poots is a member of the pro-UK Unionist Party, the DUP, which rejects the Northern Ireland Protocol as it stands since it puts a virtual barrier between Belfast and London. He believes the checks are unlawful, but last week his bid to force the Stormont executive to rethink on the issue was blocked by Sinn Féin. Since then, he claims a legal loophole allows him to act independently, causing uproar in Dublin, London and Brussels. Well, this decision by Edwin Poots, the Minister for Agriculture in Northern Ireland, to suspend checks on goods entering Northern Ireland from Great Britain hasn't gone down well with politicians in Dublin. Last night, the Irish Minister for Foreign Affairs, Simon Coveney, told the Irish Senate that this amounted to a breach of international law. Now, there appears to be more to this decision than would at first meet the eye. Traders, members of the public are not complaining about the Northern Ireland Protocol, but people in working class loyalist areas, people who are pro-British, believes that what the Northern Ireland Protocol does is it isolates Northern Ireland further away from Great Britain, and they believe that this amounts to a slippery slope towards a united Ireland, something that they strongly oppose. Edwin Poots himself is something of an isolated character. He has been deselected by his own party, the pro British Democratic Unionist Party in his own constituency of Lagan Valley and he is looking for a constituency to contest the forthcoming May 5th Assembly elections in Northern Ireland. Now, the situation as of today is that there's an expectation that the First Minister of Northern Ireland, Paul Given, is going to announce his resignation this afternoon. That will collapse the Northern Ireland Assembly, and it's unsure at this moment in time as to whether or not the Assembly elections on May the 5th will actually go ahead. And many people believe that what Edwin Poots did last night in stopping checks on goods entering Northern Ireland from Great Britain amounts to a political stunt to save the skin of the Democratic Unionist Party. So the coming days and weeks are going to be very interesting indeed. This is Ken Ray for Euronews in County Meath in Ireland. A new study reveals that coral reefs could completely disappear if global warming exceeds 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. Scientists from Australia, the UK and the US have studied their thermal refugia, places which allow coral reefs to recover from climate changes and bleaching. They found a 1.5 degree Celsius increase in temperature will cause 99% of refugia to vanish and a 2 degrees increase will leave no safe zones for corals. According to the UN, even though coral reefs cover just 0.2% of the global seabed, they host 25% of the ocean's flora and fauna. Coral extension would set off a chain reaction which could eventually starve half a billion people in countries which depend on marine resources. A reminder that you can find more on all our top stories in our web coverage at euronews.com and we'll have more news from across Europe after this break.